Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a starting steps video as Russia and we've already made our first mistake and that is being in game. Terrible. It's patch 1.3.5 and we are going to change some pre-game settings. Now the reason for changing pre-game settings is there's a new setting here in 1.3.5 that allows greater pop consolidation which ought to improve performance. Performance is an issue especially in the later game. What this will do is it will consolidate pops and if you turn it up to aggressive it will do it more aggressively but it might affect game balance. Oh no, but maybe we can get past 1300 or sorry 1900. Incidentally, we can also start out as the egalitarian society uh, in order to try and get the achievement which we will go through this route as a way of means of starting the game. So Russia is a fairly interesting start. They're one of the strongest starts in the game. In particular, they have a few advantages. Namely, they are one of the highest pop starts in the game, and they are the highest European pop start in the game. East India Company, uh, while they have relatively European-looking tech and are already recognized, they have severe discrimination problems, and they're a subject of Great Britain. But Russia doesn't have that problem. They have an enormous amount of population. Additionally, they have some of the very best resources in the game. If we look at wood in wood potentials we see that there's a huge amount of wood potentials sorry or yeah potentials here and they also have some of the very best mining in the game uh 20 throughput is kind of rare for iron mines and they have two states with a ton of it and notably perm is very one of the very best states in the game uh because it has an additional 60 oil there's some oil up here uh kind of in this region above the caucuses uh and so generally speaking they have some of the very best resources they have a lot of pops as far as disadvantages go uh russia is going to kind of have a relatively backward looking laws for European powers starting on serfdom and traditionalism and these will present state religion and these sorts of things will prevent or pre present significant challenges to playing as Russia. Additionally, they do have a unique interest group. They, this has a unique name, but it's just regular landowners, but they do have the Orthodox Church, which has the Russian Orthi Orthodox uh, Patriarchy, which has a couple of unique features. Uh, notably, uh, they are super on board with autocracy. I'm not 100% sure if this is normal, but this is not normal. They support serfdom, and they are neutral towards tenant farmers, and so, uh, in a general sense, uh, reforming through them will be a lot harder on both, you know, the autocracy front as well as the serfdom front and these are kind of you know the unique features we have here in russia now before we get started we are going to do a little bit of re-rolling and we are going to be doing re-rolling trying to make sure we get a jingoist landowner in 1.3 it's much harder to pass laws and so this uh kind of setting stuff at the beginning is more significant in order to re-roll this guy we're going to need to take him out of government put the armed forces in government so we can click confirm down here and then we are going to exile this guy but before before we do, uh, it's important to note that when this guy gets exiled, uh, it, he is going to be replaced, and he will often be replaced by one of our generals or one of our uh, military personnel. So what we're going to do is we don't want a royalist, we want a jingoist. So first of all, we're going to retire that boyo, but second of all, we're just going to take a quick look. If I recall correctly, there aren't any royalists in the landowners from here, uh, and we are going to see and if we can find someone in the navy that we particularly like again we are looking for a jingoist pacifist is the opposite of what we want although we will need another navy guy uh and then we'll take a quick look at the army if we find a guy who has the ideology we want uh we will just recruit him and promote him up to max level uh so that it is more likely again so many pacifists so many problems so what we are going to do now is we are going to take a roll uh on this guy and we are going to exile this boyo what we are looking for again is a jingoist so let's just click this click exile and now we lose our traditionalist he's now an agitator up ahead we see we have gotten a royalist so what we are going to do is we are going to restart the game uh, and keep doing this until we have ourselves a jingoist boyo <coughs> Uh, so we have in our navy, or for our admiral, in this reroll, we have a jingoist, so we will recruit him. Also notably, we did exile another guy who was a uh, traditionalist or something like this uh, from our military in the terms of the ground troops, and we will promote this guy up to max level here in order to try and roll uh this jingoist into power and then we will come here we will put him out we will put the armed forces in because we want the armed forces in anyways and we will see if we can exile this dissident here and now 
we get our reformer in drat although the reformer notably uh has some stuff that's kind of okay not the best not the worst uh but uh we will continue on trying to re-roll here so we finally got our guy in and it seems like there's been a change from 1.3.3 to 1.3.5 in that mando man is it really weighted heavily on their popularity and if they're one of your other already one of your generals or one of your navy guys and this is a bit of a change so it seems to be the case that you just have to get your most popular guy uh to be uh you know, you, your most popular guy gets in, and then you just exile, so this actually changes the metagame in terms of uh, trying to force certain ideologies, uh, because if you can recruit a general that has a certain ideology, uh, then you can just get rid of all your other generals in the same interest group, and then promote this guy up, and then they will take over. Maybe the popularity has to be positive, uh, but we do get this plus 40 popularity, and the whole reason why we were re-rolling for Jingoist, who we'll put back in the government, we never meant to leave you guys behind is so that we can pass two laws really really quick uh, notably first is colonial exploitation colonization speed is based on cars being loud outside now colonization speed is based on incorporated pops of which uh, there's a ton of incorporated pops in Russia and so we will be able to pass it really quickly but more importantly and we're doing this one second because we want the landowners to have a little more clout for this uh, is we will be going professional army which is stepping away from this 25% juice to the landowners uh, towards a 25% juice and we should be able to pass both these laws really 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 quickly and this will be of great help and this is kind of what we're doing in the laws uh, um, then we are going to try and maybe see if we can force a market liberal landowner a little bit later on in terms of laws and try and go homesteading and something like this. Um, we'll see how that shakes out. So Russia has another unique feature uh, that is pretty important to be aware of at the start of the game, which is a whole bunch of your territories are not incorporated at the very start of the game. You have a bunch of unincorporated states, and so we will use some of the extra floating bureaucracy to incorporate a whole bunch of these states, uh, you know, so that obviously we can collect more taxes. Uh, we still want to float a little bit uh, extra because we know we will be using it uh, once we get colonial exploitation, which will be relatively soon and we will want to build into more government administrations once we get our construction up and running as far as the diplomacy goes we are improving relations with some gps austria prussia great britain france uh, we also rivaled additionally uh two sicilies in addition to the ottomans which we start out with a rival for mainly just so we can float a little bit of extra influence uh so that we can you know accept trade agreements and this sort of thing in addition to uh decaying infamy a little bit more which will be uh a a bit, a bit nice but not super essential as far as the authority goes we did do the authority trick uh of boosting our taxes spending the authority and then dropping or down these the government wages rather uh so that we could put in more stuff we don't really mind the uh this opposition group approval is like not a big deal um and so this is fine and what we have done is we are suppressing the orthodox church they get in our way notably the orthodox church is going to split uh a lot of uh you know, in terms of who gets attracted to the Orthodox Church, you see clergymen, peasants, laborers, etc. For the rural folk, you see peasants and clergymen. We generally kind of want to empower the rural folk, but we'd rather do it by disempowering the Orthodox Church. A lot of people who would have gone to the church will instead go to the rural folk, uh, but this is a little bit cleaner, and, you know, clerks and laborers, too, will also get pushed into other groups. So we'd rather do it by kind of pushing them down. The main reason is eventually we want to go for homesteading, I think, uh, and so this will help out with that uh with the rest of the authority we are encouraging resource industries and perm we're kind of doing the normal split that we do uh which is that we are encouraging resource industries and doing road maintenance in one place at the very beginning uh we will look to expand the industries get economies of scale through put bonus early on we have 61 infrastructure to work with and so this is what we're going to be doing here in perm and then we are also uh doing encourage uh road maintenance and manufacturing in moscow now moscow is not the very best state for building tall here in Russia. The best state is Kiev uh, because it has a higher arable land, which means you can get more people. But you can get up to 12 million people in Moscow uh, from migration before you start running the malice, which we cannot see from being overpopulated. And 12 million is a lot. And we start out with more manufacturing here in Moscow. And so what we're going to do is, at least at the very beginning, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to leave the capital in Ingria for now. Um, notably, if you are playing multiplayer or you are 
often you'll want to move this capital because it's very easy to land. Uh, this sort of thing is a little bit of a strategic concern, but single player, not a very big deal at all. And finally, uh, as far as interests go, we have moved around some of our interests as part of our expansion plan, which we will be getting into shortly. Uh, we have declared an interest in Zanj so that we can go after Kenya. Once we get colonial exploitation through, we have gone after Indonesia because we will probably go after Brunei. We notably already have an interest in Mexico. We want to try some new things out as far as expansion goes, probably taking California, and of course going after Peru, Bolivia, because it's one of the best expansions of the game. And that's kind of most of our pre-pause, uh, or most of our pre-unpause action, with the exception of our construction queue, which we're going to talk about now. Uh, so generally speaking, what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to get as many kind of logging camps as possible, and to do this we're going to need to, uh, at least very early on, and we're going to want to ramp out construction as quickly as possible. Construction, it's better for us to build wood frame buildings initially until we kind of pull the slack out of all this money and then transition to iron frame buildings. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building construction centers in perm and then we're going to be building chop chops in perm. So we're just going to put down five construction centers. We can easily afford this. We can actually probably afford to do ten. Uh, the subsistence farms in all of our territories give us wood and fabric and on a per construction basis, uh, you know, it is going to be fastest with in particular wood and frame buildings so this is thing one but then we're going to want to transition to iron frame buildings once we get pretty close to an even balance so this is uh what the strategy is going to be as these kind of come up we're going to need to build more logging camps once we finish all these construction centers so we'll put these in they'll have plus 20 percent throughput that they are getting from both the taiga forests and encourage resource industry uh, in order to support these we will need more tooling workshops which we will build up in moscow where we are encouraging manufacturing and so we will kind of cycle between these two, uh, you know, for the early game. Also, before we unpause, we do need to check all the PMs because I know we're not on the very best PMs. For example, we're not on sweeteners. We want to swap up to sweeteners. We, of course, want the alcohol here. Uh, we are going to go to Craftsman Sewing and find someone to import from. We're going to go to Luxury Furniture Production. Every single one of these uh, is important to check kind of early on uh, so that you make sure you are trying to get everything onto privately owned that you can. Notably, the shipbuilding one or the ships are a big one. We do have state religion, so we can't go... Uh, for free churches and that sort of thing, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, and we're going to double check we don't have philosophy department at the start, which we don't. Now, notably, we really want to use tools as much as possible. I think that we can't support all the tools in the world, uh, and so we will just use them in one in just the rye farms. I think that will cause, yeah, no, we can't do that. It'll cause a tool shortage, but it'll when we turn it up it will allow us to massively expand the tools which is going to be good for us because these buildings here they're aristocrat owned we don't really care if they're profitable what we really want is capitalist owned buildings that are profitable and so you know building up a bunch of tooling workshops is going to help with that uh so coming back in here uh you know we're scroll down everything looks pretty good except for we want to do fishing trawlers and we want them privately owned this is a pretty big one and we're about ready to unpause here we just have to declare our first war. Now, I am thinking what we will do is we will go after Mexico, specifically going after California. I'm, we're going to try a low infamy expansion kind of plan. Here is Russia trying to expand mainly through markets in this run. And so uh, this is just a really, really valuable state, though. And I'm keen on trying this strategy. 12 gold appears here. Uh, we can notably put cotton plantations here. We also have the gold, the iron, and 50 oil will appear here. Not that we're hurting for oil playing as Russia. And so this will be the war that we go for for on on pause followed by going for uh beijing uh in particular and war reps on china which is almost always good uh if you can swing it uh we are just going to do the timing so that we get in there while the uk is getting in there and then we'll go for bolivia because you get both peru and bolivia and that's kind of the early game expansion plan here all right, so we also have to fix up some trade routes. We see that we're exporting grain. We definitely don't want to be doing that. In general, you want to be importing all your agrarian-oriented goods uh, because uh, the aristocrats only contribute 10% of their dividend income to the investment pool, and the capitalists contribute 20%, and so they'll generally be preferred. Uh, we will kind of hold off on importing you know, these capitalist goods, but we are super okay importing the sugar. We're okay importing tea. We would prefer not to import porcelain, and we, again, are super okay importing this. We are importing these. I'm not sure we need that. I think we can let that go, and we are exporting alcohol to France. That 
that's fine. We're also importing tools. We do have a shortage problem. And so we will keep importing tools until we can rectify that ourselves. But we would just want to kind of comb through and see if we can get dyes and silk and fabric and these sorts of things, these agrarian owned stuff ourselves, uh, or rather we can import it. We can import these from the Danes. More than happy to do that. Grain, I believe we produce it very cheaply, but so does Shing. So we'll import from Shing. Notably, we're going to go to war with them soon. So that will be kind of that will go away and we'll import silk from a variety of targets here uh we'll import meat if we can looks like we can we'll take it from prussia and austria having a sensitivity to our convoys although we do have a lot of convoys um and notably we are going to want to do a really large volume of trade in general because we want to get these trade agreements we want to improve relations with countries and we want to pull them into our customs union and so more than is even efficient we will try and push the trade ottomans aren't going to like us but we'll import from them anyways the reason they're not going to like us of course is because we are rivals with them but we are just going to look to kind of do this up bolivia we will be conquering but i think that we will look to diplomatically expand through the rest of this region um this sort of thing and so we will also just look to you know import as much of the agrarian stuff as possible now we will want to export a lot of the capitalist owned goods but we really do not have a lot of this at this juncture we do not have a lot of tools we do not have a lot of furniture these sorts of things Things. And so uh, once we get that up and going, though, here in Moscow, where we do have encouraging, uh, you know, the manufacturing industries, then we will look to export and just try and do a really large volume of trade and move in a way so that we specialize in industrial stuff. And this is kind of another weakness of Russia at the start is they do start very agrarian oriented. If you look at the buildings, you know, we have 150 of these, uh, you know, agrarian farms and not a whole lot of this, mainly just paper mills. Uh, eh, you got some textile mills. It's not nothing, but it is very agrarian oriented at the start. And we want to get to the capitalist orientation, primarily through logging camps and iron mines at the start, because that's going to help facilitate this construction which is moving along quite quite nicely here so we make it up to like 30 construction with all of our perm construction centers and we see we're still making gobs of cash we notably are on high taxes you probably should just have it on medium taxes until you need them uh because you generally don't want to float all this money but i often forget to raise the taxes uh and i you know build the construction accordingly and since we have so much extra money and since you know what goes into the wooden frame construction centers is in subsistence farms of which we have a lot what we're going to do is we're going to come in in moscow and we're just going to add construction centers up to 10 and we're just going to look to push out the construction as quickly as possible before building up the wood now the wood will be very very profitable because we are pushing up the price of these things um currently they're not max price. This is a shortage of tools, which we started a couple import routes for. Uh, we just want to resolve it and then build the tools ourselves, focusing on getting construction up as quickly as possible here. But we will raise the price of all this very, very, very quickly by adding, you know, all these construction centers here. And so this is how we're going to approach this. Also, this Mexico war is going fantastically. A little surprised they didn't back down, but this just means we'll be getting war reps after them or out of them before going after Xing. You get colonial exploitation and notably we already have an interest down here in Zanj so we can start colonizing immediately and we probably can even cut off Great Britain uh, you know if we get a little bit lucky with some things so we'll come in we'll click the buttons correctly and we will start establishing a colony also notable for Russia they do start out with an interest in Sakhalin or uh, a claim on it and so we'll colonize Sakhalin as well you see that it's colonizing at max speed there but down here it is probably not because because of course we have the malaria but look they have 244 left with like 50 60 percent progress we have 270 with low low progress uh and so we will outspeed them uh we will look to probably colonize in here but we would really like to cut them out of kenya before we go after fang i think this would be preferred because if we can cut them out of kenya we can guarantee ourselves a huge portion of this now as far as laws go we are of course going to go pro army next a uh, big part of this is this jingoist guy and they really really love us despite the fact that we did retire a bunch of commanders at the start because we are passing laws that they like and so it doesn't matter that we pissed them off earlier and notably this means we can pass stuff that they don't like after passing two things that they do like without making them upset without forcing a rev and so this is probably the type of laws we're going to look for afterwards now we're continuing to go after mexico we should be wrapping this war up pretty quick here
We got our war started with Beijing here. We are going for, and we get that. We are going for Beijing and war reparations. Significantly, you get a ton of war reparations for them. We're actually going to pause and triple land in the capital here. We held back a few guys just for this purpose. And so we're going to come in. Oh, we can't land with our 20 stack. The rip the dream. Well, we're going to come in with three 10 stacks on their capital. Hopefully, uh, they don't have enough guys to catch us on front. And we are going to assign that little 20 stack over somewhere else they are from the central asia hq so they should be able to book it over there quite quickly and now as far as laws go i'm not sure that there's another law we can get to to uh we can get dedicated police force pretty comfortably the armed forces notably have a petition for it and they uh the gentry assembly does support it i think they support it naturally but maybe they extra support it and so we'll go this route now uh, this is a bit of concern, which is, of course, um, you know, part of us incorporating a whole bunch of stuff. We are experiencing pain from it, and so we are losing money now. Uh, we kept on ramping up construction until we started losing money. Part of this money loss is from this huge tax waste, which is particularly bad because the money gets just deleted. And so we've prioritized, you know, adding a few government administrations. Uh, we will continue to add. We're going to build them kind of tall in Ingria, uh, as well as looking for places uh, that we do not have. We have insufficient tax and look to build up there. I believe we have insufficient tax in Ingria. I suppose we could add some in Kursk as well and look to resolve this issue. We also don't aren't incorporating everything just yet, so we will want to build even more more, uh, but we are still focused on ramping out construction. And so the way it's going to work is we're going to get rid of some of this malice, and then if we're still making money, we'll still add construction over perhaps, you know, bringing the bureaucracy... Uh, deficit down entirely now this war should be relatively easy uh they are fighting uk at the same time as us we put in Qing war reps liberate ua open their market and conquer beijing all of these are pretty good and so we should be able to you know have a very explosive start off the back of this notably we are also going to try and do up uh, and we get in already very very easy big easy and we'll probably move one of these guys over yeah why don't we move this 26 stack over he can help push and we will also definitely designate this army here strategic objective on Beijing so they stick around it even after Great Britain's out notably we're also going to try and run a bunch of trade routes with Mexico and look to diplomatically incorporate them probably signing a defensive pact uh, so that they don't get railed by the US as is often uh, what happens but this war very big easy I think we might not have talked about the tech path earlier, so we're just going to briefly cover it here. Uh, we are going stock exchange first so that we can roll market liberals, uh, and we're going to try and see if we can game the system a little bit to, to try and guarantee market liberals, something like this. And so this is why we're going stock exchange first. Also notably, cotton gin and lathe will always natural spread if they're the only things available. And since they are, uh, we're letting those spread, and then we are prioritizing coming in here on lathe, then getting atmospheric engine, then mechanical tools, railways water to boiler the big idea is we want to be very resource oriented and kind of focus on tools early on and this will be big also uh we are running out of infrastructure in some of the places we are encouraging manufacturing and resource industries uh you know there's not a ton of available infrastructure here in moscow despite us you know uh doing road maintenance here which is a big part of why uh you know they're doing pretty good uh, but uh if we were to pull that off moscow wouldn't have too too much and we want to build tall here and so this is kind of why we are doing this tech thing uh this will give us make our minds even better this will make our minds even better and the mines will will need tools for those so we'll use steel tools and also uh lathes is one of the most important techs for starting to industrialize our you know our industrialists have just come up above five percent we're really trying to get them pretty caked up in addition to the rural folk again to kind of get rid of and attack this serfdom as best we can which is also one of the ideas behind stock exchange because the market liberal landowner will not oppose getting rid of serfdom another nice thing about taking beijing is that they are also giving us 20 government administrations which is going to help us incorporate a few more states and helping with the tax so we're adding more construction right 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 now um, there was one other point I wanted to make, which is that I think we've gotten a little bit unlucky here because our guy died and now we have a moderate. We have this political movement to enact homesteading, but we're not in a really good position to, you know, put it through because we are sitting on, sorry, because we are sitting on this guy who's a moderate. If he was still the other guy, if it was still the jingoist, he'd be like plus 20 happy with us because we just passed a bunch of stuff that he likes. But since he died, a little bit unlucky, we were hoping to 
just kind of slingshot into a very fast one of these. And maybe we can look around and try and see if we can employ a... Ooh, that's one front now? No. Let's try and move this guy around. A little bit of micro, of course, from the really hands-off system uh, that you have to do this or you're going to get bricked. Uh, but maybe we can try and recruit generals, uh, specifically looking for guys who are market liberals as much as we can. Um, we do have a cooldown for another few years on being able to exile this guy, uh, but we could exile this guy hoping for a market liberal, uh, this type of thing. He is an authoritarian. Don't like that. Don't like the pacifist. Don't like the pacifist. So we'll leave that. And we'll We'll see if we can recruit a navy guy again looking for someone whom we can make popular by having them win battles uh who is a market liberal which would be the most preferable can't really find it a little bit unfortunate uh but uh we can try and boost the clout of the rural folk which we are in fact kind of doing through uh suppressing the orthodox church they are coming up a little bit but it's still not too terribly much we might have to go for voting laws or something like this instead so we pick up lathe and i think it's important and emphasize why this is one of the very best techs in the game or one of the most important ones we are trying to reform and you know the landowners are super big the industrialists aren't very big and what lathes is going to do is it's going to not only give us more money but it's going to help us make the industrialists big because being privately owned means it's owned by capitalists who tend to be industrialists and so this will help them get more powerful if they are merchant guild owned they're owned by shopkeepers which are while primarily industrialists although just barely they are also quite a lot of petite bourgeoisie which is not as preferable and so what lathes does is it unlocks text in the textile mills which give us privately owned instilled a merchant guild owned see we're merchant guild owned now we're privately owned same with furniture manufacturers and the glass works we'll have to employ import the lead from somewhere but now all of these all of these buildings are now owned by capitalists. Capitalists also notably contribute a lot more to the investment pool, uh, which is huge for us because we can't really utilize too much of it um, at this current juncture. We are still trying to rapidly expand construction. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, now kind of push the iron specifically uh we are still just getting out of you know kind of having some shortages of tools uh we are going to push the iron and we're going to look to start turning things onto iron frame buildings so for example we have a small or relatively small construction center here in ingria uh if we turn this on we run a shortage and so in order to try and resolve this shortage and ramp up construction even more we are going to try and import uh this iron from other people also we need more silk and dyes because of the other changes we just did and so we will just look to resolve these preferably through places that aren't going to use a lot of convoys or through places we are trying to incorporate into our market. Um, now, we're currently above 25 infamy, so we can't really incorporate anyone into our market, uh, but uh, we will look to be expanding it. Now, we want to produce a lot of iron ourselves, and we also want to import it just to smooth everything out, and we want to import a lot of it once we start doing iron frame buildings, so that's what we'll do here, and this will also help us greatly, uh, you know, to have a smoother kind of amount, even though we are going to build a ton of iron ourselves. We're going to build a ton ourselves. We're going to build it on Perm. Perm is one of the best provinces in the game to do it, uh, and so while later on we won't really care if the iron price is high, before we have a ton of iron mines, we really don't want it to be that high. Once we have a ton of iron mines then it's kind of a shrug your shoulders type of thing a little bit uh notably we will we are researching atmospheric engine on the back of this which is going to greatly expand you know the amount of iron we're getting and so i think we are going to want to find a place that has coal uh that is not perm uh, because we want to find a different place to build tall uh, because we will need it for the atmospheric engine so we're just going to look where it has the most infrastructure that's not perm that does not i think Tiver does have a let's see if it has a construction penalty malice anywhere doesn't look like it it just has this and so this is the place we're going to specialize coal we're going to put a few in at the back of the queue we're going to put it auto expand that way uh it'll be a little bit more smooth once we get atmospheric engine because that uses coal uh we're also getting closer and closer to enforcing on these boyos not much they can do about it after this just some small ball wars we've also added another 20 construction centers to the queue uh this is not as efficient cost wise as turning up to iron but on a per construction basis it is going to be faster at developing this we're also trying to you know get landed voting through we're gonna might have some difficulty with this we'll give some people promotions no big deal uh but we are looking to not have so much reserves and so that's why we are okay eating some inefficiency uh you know 
we get out a little Han secession. We're okay eating some inefficiency in our in terms of our cost. We are just trying to ramp up construction. This really is very, very important. Uh, this is really painful, though, the bureaucracy deficit from the Han secession, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. They weren't, they didn't have uh, access for a while. Uh, we only recently got them uh, this port, and so we're just going to be putting this down, uh, you know, and trying to continue along. Uh, we don't have an interest in that crisis. Uh, but now we have, an, you know, like another 30 construction and we are barely kind of making money uh, and we are looking to get enough iron uh, both through trade as well as uh, you know this other stuff so that we can uh, both through trade and construction so that we can start turning you know all of these up uh, to like let's say Kursk where's Kursk I think this is one of the ones or if not Kiev is there's curse so we can you know come in here and do like this uh, without running any shortages really don't want to run the shortages but really trying to get to around 200 construction uh, we will just be able to land pretty quick here or we should be able to but you never know uh, we did enforce on the other boil I believe uh, which is just annexing our subjects. We're doing that because we're trying to go for the lowest infamy possible wars. We're looking to get under 25. That way we can try and incorporate people in the market. On that front, we already have a trade agreement with UA. We would love to get them into our market. We have been improving relations with Mexico. They're cooperative. I think we're going to go for a defensive pact if they'll ever accept it. Uh, you know, uh, with just like us not needing to give us to give them an obligation. We're going to try and keep an eye on plays and defend them if the if the u.s goes after them uh but which we all have a thing we have an interest in the region where the u.s would go after them in which is you know all this u.s area pacific coast and then we're pushing through here and so you know things are coming up we're trying to get to 200 construction here this is kind of you know very important early on and then we'll try and resolve you know this issue here as well so we couldn't get on landed voting, mainly because we just had three setbacks, uh, but fortunately we have a movement to enact freedom of conscience, which I think is going to be pretty good. Currently we have state religion, and so we can't invite people uh, unless they follow our religion. With freedom of conscience, we will be able to invite and make better use of uh, the agitators, um, of which we cannot invite any of them, so we will do that. Uh, we will also up this, uh, because after getting back Beijing, we of course are in good shape on this front, making a lot of money money moves that is um and also as far as colonization goes it looks like we somehow dropped an interest in zanj uh and so we might not be able to cut off great britain from there but hopefully we can still get through into there we do colonize a lot faster we have a lot of incorporated pops uh and this sort of stuff we also started colonizing over here in fang um but overall uh, i think we're going to conclude the episode here you know we got over 200 construction in relatively short order and we're still making money probably could have pushed it a little bit more aggressively uh in retrospect just the real problem is turning on the iron frame buildings um of which we could probably turn the rest on right now um you know i think this will cause us to run a shortage but the shortage should get resolved relatively quickly uh in particular we can also let you know the auto queue uh control a lot of the construction at this point uh the investment pool is pretty large uh it looks like it is shrinking at a decent clip though and so maybe we'll run into trouble but yeah we're just going to do these small ball type wars and continue because we want to stay under 25 infamy because we want to invite people to our customs union if you see a look here we might even be able to invite some boyo nope we can't uh but we are hoping we can invite you know mexico and ua relatively soon mexico is not that far off um you know if we had an obligation with mexico we could get mexico in uh but we would love to have a defensive pact with them uh, so that they uh, don't get clapped by the USA. This is something we talked about earlier. This will improve our relations faster. We are doing a bunch of trade with them. And also I wanted to just briefly talk about, we have some of the best wood in the game, some of the hardest wood as Russia. You know, we have some of the best potentials that are not bricked by, you know, uh, Brazil has pretty good potentials, but a lot of these are bricked by having, you know, negative construction modifiers. We don't have any of that here in Russia. And so I think we're going to emphasize or focus on, you know, wood earlier on and do furniture as our secondary thing after tools instead of the normal kind of clothing one. And so I think that this will be pretty good. But this is just, we're concluding the episode here. You know, we got uh, three expansion spots. We got in on California. Peru, Bolivia, and Beijing. I think this is really strong. We passed several laws. We passed, notably, uh, we got dedicated police force, uh, colonial exploitation, 
in professional army because of our jingoist thing at the start then we rolled this guy which kind of bricked our ability to try and go after uh you know homesteading in a kind of timely fashion uh they'll still be minus nine we could maybe do this move after this uh but i i don't think we'll be able to pull the trigger just yet i think we got to try and make some more moves uh but other than that uh you know a lot of construction things are moving up and it's looking like a good start to this run